thank you. <laughs> Fred, we have a logo. Oh, do we? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think of that? <laughs> I have something on my ear. <laughs> All right, so a question that I wanted to start with off of the, the last conversation that I had with Doug Schoen and Bob Jimenez. I was wondering what you, th you thought about this. I thought that one of the things that Doug was saying, which I thought was interesting, is that the disaffection with the two parties and with partisanship is so great, and the growth of independent voters is so great <laughs> that politicians are beginning to figure out that they can use that as a brand. They can mm. identify themselves as independents and um, overcome some obstacles in order to, you know, or, or by doing that. And I, I thought I'd ask you what you think about that and if you think independence should be Pleased about that? Worried about that? Um, couldn't care less about that? <laughs> what, uh, how do you read that? Well, I'm happy that they don't write about us. I like that. Mm -hmm. I like it very much. Mm -hmm. uh, for a variety of reasons. One, I think that the, if they wrote about us, it would discredit us. <laughs> and two, since they don't write about us, I infer, with my Stanford training in logic, <laughs> I infer that we're winning. Because what else could it mean? So I'm not an unbiased Sunday morning uh, whatever very biased, but moreover, I actually believe that we are winning. I think all the indicators show that. Uh, what we can't do at the moment is win elections. And now, hopefully this will not shock you out of your chairs. I feel good about that too. You do, you do. I'm not into winning elections. Uh -huh. I don't want to win elections. I want to build a movement. I want to be a part of a growing, growing force of American people who are saying, the time is coming and we are moving time along when we will give expression however we see fit to our constitutional right to give expression to what the people of the United States of America want. Right. And I think that's fantastic. I've worked my whole life, and so have many in this room, to have that moment come. And I don't want to waste it on winning. <laughs> it's too, to me, speaking subjectively, it's too wonderful a feeling to waste on winning. Mm -hmm. Now, what we're concerned with doing, as I see it, mm -hmm. is having the people of this country find a variety of ways to give different expression to what the people of this country stand for. Because I trust the people of this country and I don't trust winning. Mm -hmm. That's where I'm coming at. So that's my bias right there. So you'll, you'll know where, you know, uh, and, and, and I believe that, and I think that I thought the talk you talked with, with Bob and with, uh, with Doug, Doug mm -hmm. was w were wonderful. And I think they're very, very good friends. And I appreciate what they're saying. And I think they're sensitive to issues that most people in their areas aren't, aren't, aren't sensitive to. Mm -hmm. But I, I have, and I respect the, the, their criteria and their intelligence, which is, 
But I, I come from, I come to this from a, a somewhat different angle, and I think that's true for many <laughs> here in this audience. And it's, it's nice to be on a, it's nice, for example, to be on a Sunday, to be commenting on a Sunday morning talk show, which wasn't boring me to death. So I appreciate right. what you were doing. And that's that's, that's a plus. I, I, I can't, I can't tell you how much I appreciate that. But, but, uh, but, but. I was thinking about this, and I, I, I wish I would have done my homework and put the names together. I meant to ask you about it, but you were busy producing a show. Yeah. So uh, I, I didn't get around to talk to chat with you. I, here's, a, here's a test also. I, I, I don't know what it's a test of, I'm not sure. But just indulge me for a moment. I was thinking about the issue of uh, 2008. Yeah, the presidential's coming up. Do we, do we have a candidate? Mm -hmm. are we going, how are we going to be involved? What are we going to do? And everybody has different thoughts about that. And I'm, I'm sure they're all good thoughts, and we'll probably all work at them in one way or another. But I was thinking about this. And um, I think, as a, a candidate, forget about the campaign, and what we do is independence. That's the most important thing. But just think about a candidate, how close we are. I was thinking that I, and I'm bad at names, always been bad at names. It's not senility, it's just me. Um, I can think of 10 people in the United States of America, many of whom little old me knows, and I'm not a big shot. Mm -hmm. 10 people who, if we could get them together in a room right now, and they have much in common, I, 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 I'll give you, I, I only know if you remember a few of them, but Tefi could determine explicitly the next president of the United States. I don't think we're far at all. Mm -hmm. Some people talk about it as if we're a great distance because Again, I don't want to be insult anybody in the room, but because we're uh, addicted to winning. But I think we're, we're, there, are, there are independent movements amongst big people, little people like us, middle-sized people, uh, left people, right people, whatever, union people, black leaders, and so on. There are people like that, who, who, 10 of them I thought of. Mm -hmm. If you put them in the same room and they could find a way to do what is nearly impossible in our culture, namely talk to each other, they, they, they could say, you know, I'll give you the union vote, I'll give you the black vote, I'll give you the Hispanic vote, I'll give you the youth vote, I'll give you the bloggers vote, I'll give you, and so on and so on and so forth. Just 10. I think we're down to 10. I'm not saying we want this, but we could have this in my opinion. They could sit there and say, all right, let's pick a candidate and we'll get all of the groups that we represent, because mm -hmm. we're independents, and we'll put them together I think that's 60% of the votes for the President of the United States, mm -hmm. which is a, a win. Right. I think that's amazing to consider. And that's only become true during our lifetime, in fact, during our independent time. In some cases, it's a lifetime. In some cases, it's an hour and a half. <laughs> <laughs> but that's cool. That's cool. That's fine. An hour and a half is, uh, I mean, there's no reason to deny the significance of an hour and a half independent. <laughs> I think that, that we're that close is a measure of the fact that we are winning. And that winning, I feel good about. Winning elections is another matter. But winning in the sense that the, the, the people of this country, and I always have to remind people, for me it's important, who have a, an explicit constitutional right to express in, in critical situations what they believe in. Mm -hmm. Not just the uh, special interest groups, not just the politicians, not just the newspapers, but the people of this country have a right to do that in the Constitution, but the Constitution has been so altered in election laws, as this was pointed out earlier, that they cannot yet give expression to it. Yeah. Uh, 
That's my bias. That's what I believe we're doing. The people in this room and the millions upon millions upon millions of independents who I, th oh, I think it's fair to say, I watched that wonderful, wonderful film earlier, we represent. We don't represent them in that, uh, uh, that, that, that funny way which is mediated by the major lobbies and the major corporations so it never sounds anything like what the people want. You, you take the people over here, they say things, we hear them. We hear them every day. We know what they're talking about. We know what they're saying. And then there's this mechanism uh, called a bunch of different things, but let's call them lobbies. For, and then what comes out the other side, say, what? I said that? That's not what I said. That's what you said. That's not what we, the people, said. Mm -hmm. That's what we have to do something about, and we are. And, uh, and that's my focus, not winning. Now, I hope that's not antithetical to the American way, to, to American pragmatism. But no, I think it's exactly what American pragmatism is about. Pragmatism, and I've studied pragmatism since I, I trained in philosophy, pragmatism is about giving an undistorted expression to what people want. Mm -hmm. Not a distorted expression. Mm -hmm. That's called something else. In fact, it's called many other things. It's mainly called lying. But <laughs> yeah. that's what it is. And Americans are pragmatists. I accept that as true. I've studied that and I believe it is the case. Americans are pragmatists. And I think pragmatism is beginning to, to rear its ugly heads, its ugly head to the, to, the, to the lobbyists and to other people. Americans are beginning to speak out. That's what independence means. Beginning to say, we the people have to find and will find a way to speak. Well, I'm so interested in, you put it so eloquently, that we don't want to get forced into or rushed into going for winning elections. That's, we want to, we, the independents, the American people who are coming together, want to set the terms of our own progress, and we don't want to get uh, distracted from that. We don't want to be forced to plug into traditional or other ways of doing politics because they're detrimental to the road that we're on. Um, how do you teach that to people, do you think? Because I'm thinking, in, in, in one way, I have kind of an interesting experience with this. There, there's numbers of people who are here with us today who've run for office. They ran for office as independents. They did damn well in their elections. They, some of them got, you know, 30% of the vote, first time out. They were able to tap into something in their community. And I talked to them, and I know that part of what they're feeling is, well, gee, let me, let me go out and do this a couple more times, and maybe I can add to my coalition here locally and bring this one in, and, and, and I can win. And from that position, elected to such and such office, you know, the state legislature in Georgia or whatever, from that position, I can build this movement bigger and, and stronger. It's a seductive myth. It doesn't happen that way. And that can be understood by just plain old solid uh, methodology. You know? Mm -hmm. You don't win some things that way because you can't because something blocks you at a certain point. But it seduces people into thinking that what's important is how close they are to winning. That's not what it's about at all. Okay. Hmm? You know, there's two different kinds of growth. All of us, who, who, you know, we, we, we studied this somewhere or another. Maybe we didn't get it because we were not in a good school. But, um, <laughs> but, but it was being taught. There were two kinds of growth. There's quantitative growth and there's qualitative growth, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And quantitative growth, which can be, a, you know, can be a valuable thing. In many areas, that's very good. If we improve the economy rather than doing what's currently happening, then we making it worse, but trying yeah. to convince people that it's improved. Right. right? 
if we don't play with statistics, but we use them fairly, then we have, quantitative growth could be a good thing. But it's not the only kind of growth. And the trouble, the problem with quantitative growth is that in the situation that we're in, the more votes we get, even if we succeed in getting votes over the, you know, the heads of the media and so on. Ah. What do I do now? <laughs> <laughs> We're back. I keep talking, but I won't say anything important. I knew my ear was not capable of <laughs> Thank you both. Okay. Thank you. Let's keep going. See, the, the closer we get, the more votes we get. So you get, you know, three, then you get seven, then you get ten. I'm talking about the campaigns that I've run. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> 15, 18, 20, 30. And people say, hey, there's a, there's a quantitative progression here. I'm getting more and more and more and more. But the more you're getting, the more the people who are into winning and nothing else are going to put deterrence in your path to keep you from going to the next level. That's what's going to happen. And indeed, we have to accept that. We can't just complain about that. That's the reality of our cause. That's what's going to go on. So, and I'm not critiquing people who go out and run elections uh, and, and, run and, and get nice numbers of votes. But the reason why that's important, the reason why I congratulate them, is that we're taking on the task of getting the message out there so that there can be more and more qualitative growth. That's why that's an important thing to do, you see. And we do do that. And we're effective at that. And we're going against the most fantastic media in the history of the world. We're going up against uh, more media than we can think of, and some of it has now started to be on our side. And that's great. Congratulations to all the blogs and all of this and whatever. I don't even know how to talk about that stuff, but I love it. <laughs> but what counts is the qualitative growth. What counts in the swing and sway and, 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 and this wonderful talk that Jim just gave to us, what counts mainly from my point of view in the swing and sway is the sway. And, and, and more than likely most of all the swish. But, <laughs> and, but, but that, that, that's, that's what really counts qualitatively because what we're doing is changing the environment of politics in the United States of America. And it's not until we change that, that voting is going to count at all, and how it counts will probably be reformed if we have that sway unfold. We are the swayers, the people who are more and more establishing the issues. I love it. I love it. You can't, I can't tell you how happy I am, you know, when I hear the Democrats forced to say, yeah, let's talk about the independence. <laughs> Let them win. Let us figure out how that win by the Democrats is going to be a factor, a critical factor in swaying this, this country of ours in a more positive, growthful, wonderful, helpful, giving, caring direction. That's what we're about, and from my point of view, that's what I see happening. And I'm thrilled with it. I couldn't be more thrilled. I've been in this democracy movement for a very long time. And this is a moment. And I love this moment. It's a moment when people are coming together. Not, not, again, you know, I, I love how many people are here. But there are millions not here. And they're independents. And they're also saying, in their own way, in their own parts of the country, in their own areas of work, they're also saying, we have to, we have to sway this country another way because it's not working. Because it's not helping the people who it should hurt, as Jim, Jim Andrea pointed out so eloquently. And we're doing that. 
And I think we're doing that not in the right way, but in the millions of ways that we're doing it. So again, what I stand for and believe in deeply is this qualitative change. Mm -hmm. And that's happening. And yes, the Democrats, the Republicans, they're working overtime to convert that into numbers. And that can be interesting. And that can be helpful. But I don't think we want to get caught up in numbers. Because yeah. it's not about numbers, yeah. in my opinion. Yeah. Say, well, isn't it the one who gets the most votes? Don't they win? I, I, don't, I, I don't know. I've seen George Bush many times lately on television. And if you tell me he won, I'll laugh at you a little bit. <laughs> if that's a winner, that's the last thing we want to be associated with. <laughs> they can't affect change. They're too lobby overdetermined. They're too numbers overdetermined. They're too thievery overdetermined <laughs> to affect change. Yeah. We want to make sure that we don't get the numbers, but not have the numbers mean anything in terms of the lives of human beings in this country. Yeah. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not, I like numbers, I've studied numbers, and stuff, but I'm not pro numbers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This makes me think about a uh, discussion we had in a recent Talk Talk where you made the point that in order for our democracy to work effectively, in order for our political system to be healthy, that America, America and Americans have to attend to its development consistently. And you observed in, in this conversation that that hasn't happened. And we got a, uh, an email from a Talk Talk reader in response to this discussion who asked a question that I thought I would ask you now, which was that he, he emailed in and asked, what you mean by development? What's, what do you mean by political development, this thing that we need to learn how to attend to and do? as a country and as a people. Mm-hmm. Well, that's a big one. I spent my whole life studying development. And, uh, uh, the best way, I think, of quickly sharing with people roughly what you mean by development, what I mean by it, as I've studied it and read some great thinkers on the issue and so on, and uh, is that Development have to, has to be understood. It can be characterized positively. And if I had 10 hours, I'd give you that lecture. But, um, but the best way, I think, the, the quickest way, most succinct way is to say, development is the precise opposite of change. And people think that's bad. You know. Aren't they the same? Don't they mean the same? Are they even sometimes uh, spoken of in the dictionaries as the same? Yes, they are, curiously. But they're exact opposites. Change, you see, means going from here, whatever that looks like, to here. It was this way at this time, now it's different. Change, you, know, you might have different feelings about change. Uh, philosophers have talked about it for years. Heraclitus became a famous name by discussing the issue of change and so on. Development is going from here to here by way of growth. Development is growing. And we human beings, together with lots of other species, have the capacity for growth. Growth is what, in my opinion, we're looking for. That's what I was talking about before. Not just change. Mm -hmm. So the Democrats, you know, coming back to politics, they say, oh, the whole world has changed. The whole world has changed. We have one more seat than they do, and the whole world has changed. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, my stomach feels about the same. <laughs> Remarkable. 
No, we're not looking for change. We're looking for continued growth. This is a species, our species, let's talk about that in particular. Leave the giraffes on one side for a moment. We have the capacity for growth. Some extraordinary things have happened in the history of the world, even though sometimes we don't feel that they ever have. But there has also been growth. There have been great discoveries. Not just great discoveries by the great names, so to speak, but great discoveries by each of us. We've understood some things in a different way. We've come to have that impact on how we relate to our loved ones, to our families. We can do that. I mean, I've been practicing therapy for some 30 years right now, and I, I, I love it. I love it because it sometimes helps a person not just to go from here to here, but to grow from here to here. To go through a process in which they are involved and we are collectively involved and large numbers of people involved to make a, a transformation, a development, a growth, a participation. And this country has gone through that. There's many things that were, that were not so right about this country, were quite wrong about this country when it first began. And that's what it was. I mean, I think that's... Some people find that objectionable, as do I. Some people don't find it objectionable. But it wasn't the same. And then some people came together. The people of this country, in some ways, found a way to come together through abolition, women's rights movements, all the movements that we've had. And the people have developed things, even very powerful things, and even some things which we respect using those things to go beyond those things. You know, so when the, 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 uh, the, when, when, when the right-wingers, and I respect right-wingers, they have their right to their opinion, and I debate with them and so on, but when they talk about, well, I want a literal interpretation of the Constitution. Well, you might want one, my friend, and I respect your right to have that opinion, but you don't have one. The Constitution that we have now, and all the things about it, are fundamentally different than we had in the 18th century. That's the reality. You might not think it's a good reality, but that's what we got. There is transformation, qualitative transformation, different ways of understanding. And different ways of understanding are a deep and important part of what makes us human. If we don't exercise that, well, then we could be a rock, you know? But I don't think we want to be a rock because I think we lead slightly more exciting lives than rocks. And that's not anti-rock. <laughs> you can almost see a sign going up already say, Newman is anti-rock. <laughs> no. I actually, I actually rather love rocks. <laughs> I like the quietude in which they live their lives. <laughs> but we're not rocks. Sorry I went on that way. <laughs> I, get, I get carried away. Well, well, speaking of being accused of being anti-rock, um, something I wanted to ask you about. I'm not only pro-rock, I'm pro-hip-hop. <laughs> OK. <laughs> OK. <laughs> um, I've been wanting to ask you that, as you know, and many people uh, here at the conference know, there has been a very big fight that's played out in the Independence Party of New York over the last 18 months or so. And the fight has been a vicious fight. It's been fought in the courts and in the streets and to some extent in the media and so forth. And our lawyers have knocked the hell out of them. Yes. One aspect of it um, is that you and uh, Dr. Lenora Fulani were both targets of a lot of the vitriol and, and um, the nastiness of it. Um, and I, I've been, I mean, you know, we, we, we've worked together on the, the court fights and on the street organizing and all of that. and, and I think it's gone very, very well. 
in terms of the fighting back against it. But I wanted to ask you, in some ways, kind of a personal and political question. What's that like for you? Like you turn on the television set and there you are <laughs> on TV and these people are saying these incredibly nasty and vicious and inhumane things either to you or about you um, and by extension to us and about us. And I wanted to ask you what that's like for you. What, what, what goes on? And I'm on dialysis you know, for my various things wrong. I, and uh, it, it, it's, it's hard, you know, it's not, not, much, not much fun. Anyone who's on dialysis knows that. Uh, I go to a dialysis center three times a week where I have to spend four hours getting my blood cleaned up. Um, and I, I've come to really love it. I, I, I really have. It's, it's, it might seem, I'm, I'm weird, so what can I tell you? Um, and, and, and the place where I go is, is on 86th Street, and it's a, um, a wonderful, wonderful working class grouping of people who come there, different people all over the city, but poor people, working people, and I, I it's, and I, I love being there and spending that amount of time with them. Um, I feel very at home, very comfortable. Uh, I come from a poor, working class family, and it makes me think of my family. I love being there. And we're sitting in the waiting room during the course of some of those shows, and they were right, and, and they will put on the television set in, in the waiting room. It was a little embarrassing. So it was up there, I said, oh my God. <laughs> and, um, and you know, they're saying all the things on the show. The shows were really, really vicious. They were attacking this, attacking things that the things that had had nothing to do with anything. But but, but these were the good attacks. That's how the media works. Not a question of whether it has anything to do with reality. It's whether it's a good attack. That's a good show. So New York One was uh, who was looking to go up in the ratings or whatever, uh, attacking, attacking, attacking. And I was simultaneously watching those attacks on television and watching the people in this little community of mine. And no matter what they said, the most nasty things, the reaction in my little working class dialysis community was, that's wonderful, Dr. Newman. <laughs> And I said, there was an insight there that, you know, that I and my ego could be missing. <laughs> they were saying, hey, you're on that television show. And you're talking to us on television, and that seems like a big deal. And we're proud to have you, who we know from this community here, this little dialysis community, be there. And I'm not, I'm not saying that they didn't hear a word that was said on New York One. But I'm saying they didn't hear a word they said on New York One. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I felt great about that. And I still feel great about that. I feel great that we are working hard enough, all of us together, and all of the people who are across the country, the independent movement, so that I can say some things that might make a difference to some people who hardly ever get a chance to say anything. How much, how much we, how little it is, it's very little. But we, we, we're getting it. And our message is being heard in different ways, on different days, by different people. One more story, if I can tell it. Yes, yes. One more story. Yes. Many, many years ago, when I first was in, in the early stages of my involvement in the democracy movement and the independent movement, they, they, would, they didn't know who I was. So they put me on radio a little more. And I don't know how this happened, but I once got put, I got put on a, a show, I forgot it, I think, no, but, uh, in Florida, a radio show in Florida. Uh, and it was a big show, apparently. 
it was a, what do they call it? There's some technical names for this, Jack. You know, but when people go, the, the, the drive home show. Yes, the drive time. Drive time show. Mm -hmm. So I was on this show, and with this guy named Bob, Bob something. Bob Lasseter, maybe? Bob Lasseter, right. I was on this show, and, and back in those days, I, I was younger, uh, and I was whatever you want, I mean, I'm, you know. My, my, my talks, my talking was about the same as I'm doing now, except it was uh, spiced more with official, this was the 60s, left language. So I was, I kind of sounded like a leftist. Uh, now I'm a sort of conservative, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> back then I sounded like a leftist. So I went on this guy's show, and he started, you know, what else? He started asking me all these questions about left politics, you know, leftists. Well, what do you think about this country and that country? And what do you think? Isn't this bad? Is this? And I said, I, I would say things like, uh, yeah, it's bad. All those bad things that so called leftists are doing, they're terrible. They're even worse than some of the things that other people are doing. Bad. I mean, I'm, and, and. So I would have this talk thing on this drive time show with this guy. And he started asking me on more and more regularly. Because he had it was good ratings, he was getting good ratings. See, so he put me on there very frequently, and uh, people. St you know, it was a call in too. People would call in, and when they first started calling in, it, you know, it, it, people were ask were asking the same kind of hostile questions that he was asking. He was sort of a nice guy, but he just thought it would be provocative to ask these questions. And uh, but by down the road, after like I don't know how many shows, two, three, four, five, six. Or, the opinions contained in the phone calls started to favor me more than him. <laughs> and, uh, well, jumped to end. They threw me off the air. <laughs> and uh, that was the end of that. And that started a whole series of getting thrown off the air. <laughs> Uh, so I take that as a, a wonderful, maybe it's my ego that's too involved here, I take that as a wonderful compliment. And not because I'm winning or whatever, but because when, when, when people start to, to, to listen more, even if it's a little bit quantitatively, you start to reach parts of them that don't gain expression, because you don't gain expression with those parts if you want to get on the talk show. And so I, I, how do I take them personally? I always feel gratified by them. Because I think it's uh, how, we're, how we're changing the sway of this country. In a very, again, you know, we use some of that old language, in a very reactionary moment. But we're, again, back to what I was saying at the outset, we're winning in the qualitative sense, in the best sense. They're failing, and I don't wish failure on people, but they are failing, and they're failing us. They're failing uh, we the people. And so I like to have those opportunities, and I like to be provocative. Not for the sake of being provocative, but for the sake of giving some voice to the people in this, in this country, in this world, all of us, who they've silenced. And I, I feel probably too much gratified, ego gratified by doing that. But I do love doing it. So do I feel bad when they say, no, I don't, because what I mainly see is that these people are saying silly things, which in the final analysis, qualitatively won't work because I have a whole lot of trust in people. I think the people will ultimately, I was a teacher for a long time, I think the people will ultimately get it. And I think they're getting it for this independent movement. The people of this country are getting it. I think if you took real surveys of what the U.S. government policies are all the world over, and real surveys of what the people wanted the policies of this great country to be, and I use that patriotic term because I think of myself as a patriot, you discover 
that what the people have to say is violently different than what is represented by our representative so-called. You know what was so extraordinary to me? I'm, I'll stop. You're fine. About the, about the, the anti-war movement, and I went through the Vietnam movement, as many here did, many here didn't. I know how that movement started. I know how it grew. I was at the meetings from the very beginning. This anti-war movement grew in a second relative to the anti-Vietnam anti war movement. Because something had happened. As much as they tried to negate what happened in the 60s, it really did happen. And it's had an impact on the culture of this country. And I'm very proud of that. And it's, so it's a real part of that. So when they say, all these, the analysts ask these questions, is it like that, is it the same, is it the same? No, it's not the same. Because things grow, things develop. Mm -hmm. There's a change, a profound change, in where this country was at before the anti-war movement and where it's at now. Little, maybe, maybe big, but developmental. And we'll go on from here. So I'm, I'm happy as a lark. My, 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 my life has been grand, and you know, these shows can say what they like about me. <coughs> Fred, thank you so much for sharing. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to break for lunch. Uh, we have, I have to do some quick math here. <laughs> uh, be back, ready to start, in your seats at 1.40, 20 to 2. That should give you plenty of time and there are lists, 